Hello Chargeback Army, it's Terence here for Chargeback Forward and today we will be looking at Ion Fury, a game that was released in August 2019 on the PC and is finding imminent release on a PS4, Xbox One and the Nintendo Switch. So here is a look of the full version for the PlayStation 4. Right off the bat, my concern has been amplified to the nth degree as I am finding out here that there is in fact no Y-axis inversion. And that of course is for those players that decide that down is up and up is down. Harkening back to Taming of the Shrew. I guess that's a literary joke for those that remember that. Anyways, just going through some of the options here, getting started, uh, you know. I have turned Always Run Off as I found the game uh, in my brief introduction before this for this playthrough was way too fast. And my favorite option in the sound menu is churning on Silent Protagonist. As I wasn't too big of a fan of uh, Duke Nukem 3D in uh, the 90s, uh, the quips and one-liners are jarring and grating at best. So four difficulties here, harkening back to the games of the era with bloody faces. Uh, Maximum Fury, I love this. You will die a lot and then uninstall the game. Thanks for playing. But we're going to be playing First Blood because, hey, great Stallone movie. And uh, I don't want to get destroyed in the first two seconds. Okay, we're going to skip by that cutscene. You can enjoy that when you play the game yourself. As you can see here, uh, this is uh, not running on the Unreal Engine. This is actually on the Build Engine. Now, the Build Engine was an engine, I think uh, the dude's name was Ken Silverman. He made this engine in the mid-90s and uh, was used for several games, including uh, the uh, Witch Haven series, Duke Nukem 3D, Blood, Shadow Warrior, the Redneck uh, Rampage games, and then uh, the last commercial game to utilize the build engine was World War II GI. So 20 years later, using a modified version, Eduke 32, which is still a fork off of the build engine, here we are in all of its late 90s glory with beautiful colors. I just love, uh, <laughs> I just love emptying my gun into that guy. All right, so you got some good, invariance, uh, good environments here. Uh, you'll see cocktails, where's the tails is uh, darkened out. Haha, uh -huh. tech noir. Of course, referring to the club in the first Terminator movie. And uh, the premise of games like this is to get key cards, to open doors, to move forward, to get more key cards. And as you see on the right there, Flynn's Arcade. Uh, I'm not sure if Disney will have anything to say about that, but of course Flynn's Arcade was the arcade featured in both of Disney's Tron movies. You're going to see some gaffes here in my playing as up is up and down is down. For me that sounds more like a Konami code than how I would play a game, but it is what it is. Hey, there I am. The women! Yeah, it's kind of one of the reasons why I turned uh, on Silent Protagonist is it's just it was bad enough listening to John St. John rip off uh, the Evil Dead and Army of Darkness character Ash and then other macho characters of the 80s and 90s. Uh, but, you know, in 2019, hearing uh, uh, that level of cheese again, uh, I just decided to not. All right, over here on one of these arcade machines, so there is our cards so we're going to go over. And we have a uh, Bio Menace. Major Striker, Monster Bash. Game, sadly, you cannot play. Really did like Shenmue for that. Function of going into an arcade, seeing an arcade game, and playing the arcade game. So there you go, we've used the key card going into the next area. Now that doesn't exactly sound like a Duke Nukem, but that is John St. John, the, uh, the voice actor who did the Duke Nukem games. ATM, give me money. I like how you always know someone's around, because you'll hear that over here. Man, this guy likes to take a dramatic approach of blowing through a wall to come say hi and deliver lead justice, but unfortunately he was uh, unsuccessful. 
And I'd like to introduce you to my electrified uh, Monagnock, which is the actual term for a side handle baton. Anyways, over there you see a green cross, kind of reminded me of a pharmacies that I saw while I was in France years back. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, as you've seen in a few minutes, uh, we're not going to get in. But that's fine. There is health everywhere. This is a game where your health does not automatically regenerate, so there is health and armor that you can pick up. And there is uh, tons of advertisements and spoofs and graffiti and Nukem All, of course, as a reference to uh, Duke and Nukem. And there's uh, various movie posters, product posters. We've got a couple more of our cloaked baddies here. Um, with this game, there is a secondary function to your weapons. I never end up using it in this uh, in this video here, but uh, I guess you do like a quick fire, hand, putting the palm of your hand on the uh, the hammer. So basically, you're using the hammer to shoot off shots as opposed to the trigger, which is a uh, pretty cool trick back from uh, the Wild West with uh, their six shooters. As you can tell, I'm having a little bit of fun and jumping around. I, I like uh, the fact that this game doesn't really have that much in the way of invisible uh, barriers. If there's a window that you can fit through, uh, you're probably going to jump. Not that one, obviously, but uh, one from the previous room. I do like the lighting here. And, haha, -ha, Oblong's not wrong. Fat Earth Society. Which is kind of funny, because uh, the world isn't a perfect sphere, it is slightly misshapen, but uh, that's definitely I do not want to delve into, and that's what the scientists say anyways. Not some conspiracy theories. Alright, a little bit of parkour into the kitchen, and I am hearing uh, the baddies panning out and spreading out and looking for me, so I'm just trying to get some ammo or whatever I can find, a little bit of inside parkour, and oh boy! I'm just going to shoot that guy in the knees and genitals until he falls. A little bit of parkour, and here is our shotgun, which I am amazingly inefficient with in terms of aim. As I was mentioning earlier, I did turn off the always run option as, uh, you know, uh, definitely not a detraction from this game, but uh, the moving speed was relentlessly fast, and... Uh, I just felt that it just looked ugly playing, so I just pressed down on my L3 when I do want to run like I was doing right there. I do like the fact that uh, pretty much wherever I went to uh, in this playthrough, I never really felt lost or felt like I couldn't access something. Well, this chap in here that I just completely destroyed, I never really wanted that loot. I could backtrack to that portion earlier in the level. But uh, parkour instead and carry on looking for ammo little jet set radio knot, I believe, with that graffiti behind me. Could be wrong, but reminds me of the loading screen, and I am recent, have recently been playing jet sets, so that's the reason why it came to mind. Uh, there are some fun things to look in the levels, um, you know, some care and attention was taken to design. Uh, riffs on Coca-Cola, I think it's called Addictive Cola or Addiction Cola. Uh, there you go, I think there's a coffee mod, a damn good coffee. And hot. Now uh, I found it weird with this little loading screen. I mean, 2019 uh, using an engine that is uh, 20 years old. You think with uh, its modern iteration of the Duke 32, they'd be able to solve that. But uh, at any rate, it's not too distracting. As you can tell, the uh, levels are multi-layered and pretty vast. But one thing that uh, the build engine could not do was put rooms over rooms, so that uh, definitely makes these environments more sprawling by default. I uh, just saw a sign for the Washington Foreskins. Uh, probably not the best replacement name they could have put in for the sports ball team, but I digress. So Ion Fury, originally titled Ion Maiden, and I think you can uh, figure out the lawsuit that would have uh, that actually did result from that. Ion Fury is a game that came out on PC in August 2019, initially to uh, very positive reviews, but uh, then cancel culture took hold, and I'm not really interested in entertaining any of that nonsense. But if you do want to look up the controversy surrounding the game, you can do that. But uh, 
I do recommend that if you do like a game like this, if you do like build engine games, I would focus on the quality of the product and uh, not the artists. I ain't saying they did anything wrong or right. I have is actually a zero opinion because uh, I, uh, quite frankly, do not care about petty bullshits. And cal cancel culture is the epitome of petty bullshit. All right, gonna take a I think. I'm gonna take a, a leap here. I got 100 health and six. Still got the body armor, but I went down 13 health. So obviously, uh, jumping four stories down to concrete does have negative consequences, which I'm happy to see. And uh, this is a game that you do not... Hey, there's that uh, Jet Set Radio Graffiti again. This is a type of game where you do not have regenerating health. If you do get hit, you do have to find healing packs. And as well, there is body armor uh, plates around for you to extend uh, the amount of hits that you can take. And this little re reloading feature as we make our way into a darker environment. Love is love. Over here I found this fun, you have your Menagnoc and you have to whack it since it's electrifying to get that generator open and I believe that's what ultimately opened that door to continue. Gonna get another loading, a uh, little bit of a loading pause there, not the end of the world, but uh, in 2020 and even in 2019, the PC release, you would think that they'd have a handle on that. Now I'm using a different gun here and I'm just gonna set this guy in blaze. I think I just like watch him burn to see if he's going to die from it, and he does, so that's a pretty effective weapon, providing you can strafe and avoid enemy fire. Uh, there are several uh, different types of weapons here. Uh, in this first level, or what I've played of it anyways, this is the extent of it, so a flame round uh, sidearm, a uh, futuristic shotgun. Sit down, little girl. This is your final warning. Well, it's not nice, John St. John. So again, uh, I believe there's nine unique environments, consisting of 30 levels in total. And as the lights go out, the lights will go out on uh, this uh, little first look at the PlayStation 4 version of Ion Fury. As some weird little spider creatures are going to get the best of me. And that's pretty much it. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, quick look at Ion Fury. This is Terrence from Charge Back Forward, and we'll see you again very soon.